you have to remember they chose to not join you. You didn't choose to leave them. You've gotten great at divine working, but what about divine living? Welcome to the Divine Living Podcast. I'm your host, Gina DeVee. You're not alone in wanting more. And here at the Divine Living Podcast, you can expect to be part of conversations from women like us who unapologetically dream big and are obsessed with manifesting our most fabulous lives. The conversation starts now. Today, we are talking about the most important subject of how to be okay when others you love aren't. Now, I think that this is a topic, I know this is a topic we all can relate to. You know, you're on your path, you're moving forward with your career, you're working on your life, you're reading the personal development books, you're like, wait a minute, I can do, be, and have anything I want, this is awesome, like, you know, it's not like a magic trick, but you're like, the more you do it, you're like, wait, this stuff really works. And you're feeling great about your life. However, there's two things that are kind of ruining your life. One is all the people around you who aren't necessarily feeling so great about your, as great about your life as you are. And then the people that you love that you're judging them, that their life isn't so great and it's breaking your heart. And I personally am very closely connected to understanding both sides of this dilemma. And this episode is really about how to reconcile and what to do. So we're going to take a look at these two areas. So let's start with the, you're working on your life and you're rocking and rolling and everyone else is around just kind of looking at you like, they just don't get you. Like, what are you doing? And why are you saying no? And you've always said yes before, or they're starting to judge you and think that because you've started a business that you're just about the money. And you know that that couldn't be further from the truth. And it hurts. Or you have started to notice that when you go out with your friends and they're just not as interesting to you as they used to be. And even though you love them, the conversations have gotten boring. Their wealth consciousness is in the gutter. You're trying to grow your vibration and live this better life. And it's just dragging you down. So then you don't want to hang out with them as much. And then they're like, oh, you think you're just too good for us because you just did your personal development course or you're building your business now. You don't need us anymore. All of this can feel so, so icky. And what I want to let you know is, and you listen to me, you are leaving no one behind. Everyone around you, I am sure, has been more than invited to get on this joy ride with you and start growing up emotionally, start growing up financially, start growing up spiritually. I am positive you are not keeping any of this beautiful wisdom to yourself and trying to keep them out. So part of being on this path is you got to get you had a choice to say yes to this tribe and it comes at a cost. It comes at a cost of you don't get to keep pleasing all the same people anymore. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with you that you're not out of integrity and you have to love them enough to let them go if that's what they're choosing. You have to remember they chose to not join you. You didn't choose to leave them get that. And you have to love them enough to love their choices too. I didn't say you have to like their choices. You have to love them enough to love their choices. But their choices have nothing to do with you. So you need to let that go. You need to redirect your focus. You need to keep moving forward in the direction of your dreams. You need to keep being connected with God and guidance and the universe. And I can promise you that we do live in a void universe. And if friends or even family members fall to the wayside, new is going to come in in both departments. You're going to attract new friends and you will attract new family members who maybe though they're not blood relatives, they will be family of choice. 
What I know is that you are not going to feel unloved. You're not going to feel alone. You're not going to wander this journey isolated, that there is a whole tribe and community and people and colleagues who are excited to play at the level that you're at and are equally as interested in growing and in challenging themselves and processing and becoming aware of what's going on and getting themselves to that higher consciousness place too, getting themselves to make healthier choices. You are not the only one. Just be committed to surrounding yourself with those who are, because you know the statistics, your income, your health, your happiness is the average of the five people you surround yourself with the most. So you got this, that your job is to be committed to your path and you get to be committed to having people that are on the same frequency and the same path as you. You just don't get to choose who. So you let friends, you let family members make whatever choices they need to. You know that the door emotionally and from your heart is always open, but you need to let them come and approach when or if they ever become ready. And here's the deal. You also need to know God's got this. Just in case you thought that you were being God in their life and you were the only one that was going to be the source of them finding out about this great information, God knows where his people are. The universe knows where her people are. It's all okay. It's just not your job. Your job is to keep moving forward, keep doing you, keep moving in the direction of your dreams. Now, the flip side, the other heartbreaking one is you may have friends or family members who their life or lives are a hot mess, like really devastating mess. Like it could be serious health or serious relationship dysfunction or serious drug addiction or alcoholism or mismanagement of money or gambling addiction or just like really serious hot mess like the kind where you're just like let me fix you I will handle you I will do anything I will fund anything I will save you I will handle your life and it's a very humbling place to be in to feel so powerless because you know better than that you know that all of your good intentions don't do jack shit for them making a difference in their life. Everyone has to come to their own place of choice, their own place of spiritual awakening, their own place of asking for help and having it be real. You wasting your time, your energy, your love, your wisdom, trying to rescue someone who's not willing to work that hard on his or her life needs to end. And if you're waking up in the middle of the night and if you just have that nagging thing where it's just, it's constantly there, it's constantly there, you're like constantly worried because there could be really serious issues going on with these people that you are, you're saying like, I'm not going to be naive. Someone has to do something. Well, you're right. But chances are it's not you. You will know if you are genuinely asking being spiritually guided, you ask, dear God, what is the role that you would have me play here? And if you get very clear instruction to make a phone call, send a text, do something, then of course you follow that guidance. But most of the time, you let that person know you love them and that the door is always open. And what you have to get is that person is on his or her own soul's journey. And you can't save them from that journey and you don't want to. Because what if someone was looking at you at the time that you were some sort of hot mess, which you have been, right? You know, and they wanted to go and save you. You had to go through what you had to go through. And I'm sure there are a lot of people in your life that were saying, stop, wait, halt. And they're trying to like hold you by the nap of your neck and pull you back. But you were on your own soul's journey and you made it. A couple of scrapes and bruises, maybe a few scars. It's your journey. And you wouldn't be who you are today had you not experienced all of it. So you got to trust that God's got this and everybody gets free choice. So practice the art of surrender. Hold this person in love, in prayer. Pray that this person receive the angels, the guidance, the protection, the awareness that would be in that person's highest and best interests. And you got to let it go. 
You got to go where you're wanted, not where you're needed, because that's where you're going to be able to serve the most. And there is zero point of you going anywhere that you haven't been guided to. Just because you love that person, just because you're BFFs, just because they're your family, doesn't mean that you have been the one who is called to go and make a difference in that person's life in the way that you think that you can play savior. So be very kind and compassionate to yourself. These are not easy waters to navigate. But in the spirit of self-care, in the spirit of being a queen, have the wisdom to know when it's time for you to watch from afar, hold the space, say your prayers, but you be you and let God in the universe be God in the universe. And let that other person be on his or her soul's journey. It's not your business. When you surrender, all you will know is that you are doing the right thing for you, which is the only thing you can do anyways. So make that your pact today, that you are available to be a servant of God in the universe and to follow divine guidance no matter what. And very likely your divine guidance is not leading you on that detour. So follow your divine guidance, trust that divine guidance. Don't get guilted into, well, what if you could have done something to save the situation? God's got that. Your job is to follow the divine guidance. You're gonna be happier. You're gonna be way less emotionally drained. Let's just face it. You've already tried helping that person like 9,000 times anyways, and it hasn't done a damn bit of good. So you might as well save your money, save your time and save your energy and go in the direction that's gonna do you and the people who need it the most a lot of good. Oh my goodness, how much did you love, love, love this conversation? Please go ahead and take a screenshot of this episode right now. And I want you to tag me on Instagram and share with me what your biggest takeaway was. I love being in conversation with you, hearing from you, DM me, um, and I really love getting what is the one big takeaway that you got from this episode. Let me know on Instagram. 